Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League had one chance to show that there is potential for a long-term future, and that was season one. Uh, for those who don't know, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League launched to tepid reception, both critically and commercially. The user score is not great either, whether it's Metacritic or Open Critic, where only 19% of critics recommended this game. On Steam, you'll find that Review scores have been mostly positive, which is a bit surprising, but people argue that the campaign experience was enjoyable enough and the gameplay and the combat offered a decent amount of fun, and people are hoping that the foundation could be spruced up by Season 1, which would introduce a brand new playable character, the Joker, the iconic Joker character, though this is not the Arkham series Joker. There's like a new Joker who people are not particularly jiving with. But with the launch of season one, the reception has been rather abysmal. People are looking at season one and saying this is kind of the final nail in the coffin. If they miss the mark so much with season one and they just made the live service aspect so irrelevant with the launch of brand new content, then there's simply no long-term hope for this game. It's sort of the narrative that's going around right now, which is why recent reviews have been rather mixed. The game is still $70 or $100 if you want the digital deluxe edition, which is just something that I don't quite understand. In terms of player numbers, you'll see that the all-time peak hasn't been broken, and this is pretty tepid as far as like a major AAA live service release goes. And the 24-hour peak has capped at 2,900 players, which is more than the triple digits that the game's been getting lately, but that's because season one launch, a new character launch. So there are some folks out there who decided to tune in and see what this update provided. And unfortunately, a lot of what the update provided was disappointment. And even looking at the boosted player numbers for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, it still is about the same as the years old uh, and single player experience Arkham Knight, which had a 24 hour peak of over 3000 players, a little more than Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Did. So that further highlights that the interest running Suicide Squad has not really sparked up as much as Warner Brothers is hoping it will. And beyond that, Warner Brothers has also admitted that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has fallen short of our expectations. I don't think they've shared exact figures, but they've basically said that the game is a financial failure. So much so in fact, that they decided to shift directions altogether. Warner Brothers discussed volatile AAA console games and will lean more into free-to-play and mobile and live services, which is insane when you consider how well Hogwarts Legacy did, which was a AAA single-player campaign narrative-driven experience where Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, the live service game is the thing that ended up flopping, so why not lean into taking IPs and allowing developers to make the best experience possible and not making everything a live service. So yeah, early signs of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League already indicated that this is a live service that is not destined to last very long, that it it's fated to kind of follow the path that Marvel's Avengers did, despite the big IP brand name that it carries. And an early sign that season one might be troubled was this rather shady aspect. Recall that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was promised to offer free content, so new characters like Joker would be free, except it turns out that you could pay to unlock Joker early. This is a notice that players got not too long ago, and one of the quotes there reads, the Joker can be unlocked as part of the story for season one by defeating Brainiac, or if you just can't wait, you can get instant access to him in the store. That had people thinking there must be some grind involved in unlocking Joker if they're allowing players to just pay to unlock him right away, which is just a really shitty move. And not even Marvel's Avengers did it that way. In Marvel's Avengers, when a new character launched, you just got that character immediately. For a game that's struggling to garner player interest, the last thing it wants to do right now is test the patience of the remaining players. And that's exactly what they did with season one of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League with the launch of Joker. So what's new with season one? Well, aside from the addition of Joker, 
there's a cosmetically modified version of Metropolis, one that's corrupted with nice looking Joker imagery, but it's purely cosmetic, not much in the way of new gameplay elements or new content additions. And then there are the new incursions missions. And I put that in quote because people are discovering that incursions is just existing content that's kind of reshuffled and there's some new cosmetics and gear but it's generally argued that all this stuff is nowhere near enough for season one to feel like a substantial content update that sparks new life into the game in fact forbes put out a scathing article that detailed why this season one or the joker season of suicide squad kill the justice league is so unbelievably bad one of the worst live season launches i have ever seen said editor paul tassi who is very engaged with live services and plays them and keeps up with them he first details how egregious it is that you don't even get joker when you log in instead you have to grind to season rank 35 to fight brainiac to then unlock him, which is just a series of essentially missions that you've already played prior to season one, somewhere between 10 to 20 missions, depending on the mission to reach that level. And this is all old content with your old characters. There's no new mission types at launch year zero. The developers did say that they were planning on releasing a new mission type called Stronghold, but that may not launch until halfway through the season. And then there's the new Brainiac boss fight, for those who don't know, the setup of the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League campaign experience is they leave you in a cliffhanger where there's essentially multi-verses of Brainiacs involved. And in the base game, you fight against a Brainiac boss battle who essentially mimics the Flash. It seems as though in this one, the Brainiac boss battle mimics Green Lantern, and there's not enough variation in how that fight plays out to feel all that different from the actual Green Lantern fight. It just feels like recycled content with a Brainiac skin wrapped around it. So this also feels like recycled material. And just the whole concept of having to fight Brainiac over and over again. And Brainiac just uses powers of Justice League members that you've already fought. And so it's not really new feeling like it's just an awful concept when it comes to joker story content it's pretty bare there's like a motion comic at the beginning of the season that the season opens with and then there's like one cutscene with him being taken to argus and recruited but aside from that there's not much else he doesn't even talk to harley quinn which is kind of crazy given the strong connection that joker has to harley quinn and vice versa but yeah there's just no story mission related to joker at all there's no content specifically made for players to dive into with joker no story missions in this season whatsoever once you have joker it's back to grinding the same stuff again so the post game once you do unlock joker is not particularly fun it's more recycled content which makes the decision to lock joker until the end of what is already repetitive and grindy uh, sort of season one leveling, all the more baffling, especially with a lack of new objectives. And then Joker himself is not particularly compelling as a brand new character because all of the characters kind of play pretty much the same. They all shoot guns. And the only thing that differentiates them is how they traverse and move around and their ultimate. But that's just not enough to make these characters feel truly distinct from one another and give them a unique identity as far as gameplay is concerned. So this season one situation is just really looking like a bust. Furthermore, on Steam, you'll find users who have talked about the season one Joker content update and how it is just not enough to revitalize a game that was dying since launch. This user review reads, season one just dropped and it's literally just a grind fest to get Joker who adds almost no cutscenes and no banter. And the new map is just a reskin of the first map. Things are especially brutal if you go to the official Suicide Squad subreddit where you will find that the top posts and threads over the last 24 hours consist of people just in complete disbelief at just how bad and lacking and insubstantial this season one is with people saying things like, was a champion of this game, fuck it now. So this is comments coming from 
loyal players who had hopes that Rock said he could turn things around. This user highlighted how there's just no story content to be seen here, which is a huge missed opportunity for a character as iconic as the Joker. Here's another once loyal player who said, this is it, screw it, I'm out of here. This season was make or break for this game, which many people would argue, yes, this is very much the season that would define and set the tone for the future of this game. And with season one having just landed on its face so spectacularly, uh, many are not hopeful anymore, including loyal players. This post continues. This game definitely didn't make it as far as make or break is concerned. The new character you either grind for or buy and nothing more. No story, no new missions, no new content. There's nothing different besides new Riddler crap and some reskinned buildings. Here's somebody else. No excuses calling this season one just terrible and highlighting how Hell Divers 2, which hasn't been out as long as Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has, has been out for a shorter time, has gotten so much new content and has done such a significantly better job as a live service that feels like there's just a bright future to come. And Hell Divers 2 is also a game that charged $40 instead of Suicide Squad 70, which makes the value of that game all the more enticing. Here we have another Reddit user. Season 1 is an insult to the remaining player base, and the complaints of this player echo complaints seen across the board, discussing how lackluster the story is is if there's any to be discussed even what is the point of unlocking a new character when you're basically not doing anything new with them you unlock them at the end of season one content and we, when you finally unlock joker what you're left with is the insubstantial recycled grind fest that is the post game here's somebody else who's in disbelief saying holy shit you're telling me there's no story new missions are basically the same stuff i need to grind 35 of those missions before i can unlock the new character through a recycled boss fight referring to the fact that the final Brainiac boss battle in the season is just the Green Lantern boss fight you've already played. And this is generally just how the community discourse is playing out, again, from once loyal fans who are now saying, it's been real, y'all, I'm out. Who are saying, uh, everyone who paid for a free character just told Rocksteady to continue to do stuff like this in the future, referring to the ability to pay to unlock Joker early so you don't have to grind through the content of season one to unlock the main sort of highlight of that season, which is the Joker. And they did this on purpose, knowing full well that people will have a better time if they unlock Joker and go through season one with him instead of unlocking him at the end after having played through recycled content with old heroes. Some people are hoping that we just skip to Deathstroke, the character that most people are looking forward to, because some believe that the game may not even last long enough at this pace for Deathstroke to be developed. Even the presentation of the introduction of Joker is being called into question, as some people highlight how there's no cutscene with the team, the core characters discussing going to a Joker world, not even any mention of why they want Joker. There's no narrative setup for why Joker is even there. Again, Joker doesn't even have a conversation with Harley Quinn. Some people are already assuming the worst about this whole situation, calling this a cut and run. Basically, one last cash grab before they decide to shut this whole thing down. It just feels like the development team could only do the bare minimum. It feels like they were just not really prepared for the live service aspect of this game. And they're just crossing off a mandate of having to get this thing out there because that's what they promised, but didn't actually have the time or resources or the environment to be able to fully realize whatever the season one was fully intended to be. Like, people were already pretty upset that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League ended up being a live service. There was so much ill omen surrounding that, and that ill omen ended up being realized. But the least uh, they could have done was at least be fully prepared to deliver on the live service aspect that they promoted so much. If this sets the tone for what's to come, then, uh, yeah, this is just sure death for a live service that was already hanging by a thread. And at this point, people are demanding an explanation for why this game turned out the way it did, why so much was over-promised and over-advertised, and uh, just what the hell is going on. Because it feels like season one couldn't even meet the lowest of expectations as far as the bare minimum that this season should have done in order to be able to at least give what remains of the player base, the real loyal dedicated fans, something to chew on. Even they are woefully disappointed by this and cannot defend this in any way, shape, or form. And it sucks because I know the developers worked many, many years on this, but alas, I could only discuss the results. And the end result is just a game that has no hope. 
um, and just wasted potential for what could have been an amazing single-player campaign experience had that been the focus instead of turning this into a live service, had Rocksteady stuck to its strengths like they did with the Arkham series. It's insane that it took so long to make this game, and this is the best result that we got. I'm genuinely curious to hear what the behind-the-scenes story of the development of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is, because there's got to be a story for things to turn out like this, is at least my opinion. And I'm curious to see if we're going to see developers speak out and investigative reports uh, come out about what the hell exactly went on here. But uh, as far as I can see right now, uh, there's simply no light at the end of this tunnel. Uh, I believe uh, this is kind of the final nail in the coffin. Um, it would take nothing short of a miracle and just a complete revamp and overhaul of this game for it to come back is what I think uh, Season 1 really deflated any semblance of hope that this title had. Is at least one man's take. It sucks, but th it's, the, it's the reality of the situation. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Season 1 of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.